Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Davis, and I want to welcome you to The God Principles. This is going to be a video about what to eat and what not to eat in the Philippines so you can stay healthy. I want to introduce my guest. I know him as Lud, Lud Lestari. Lud, introduce yourself. Yeah, good everybody. Uh, this is, uh, again, my name Lud, and uh, happy to join you, Charles, on your channel and uh, share some of the information that I can with your viewers. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you taking this on. Uh, our conversation a few weeks ago at a Brother in the Fe Philippines breakfast, you mentioned about the availability of vegetables, healthy eating, uh, the quality of the food here. And what really stood out to me, Lord, was when you said, look at the animals here. They're thin. And I've been paying attention to that <laughs> ever since you said that. I, Lord, I'm serious. Over here at the snack bar, this what really stood out to me. Normally, I go over there and I buy the kids some ice cream every now and then, right? Right. I went over there one day and offered them some ice cream, and they said, no, we want some noodles. We're hungry. And what you said to me stood out, because I looked at them, they skin and bone. Well, they're, they're, they're eating, yeah, where they're eating food that's uh, rice, which is non-nutritional, and it's just a temporary filler, so of course you're going to stay hungry. So it's, it's again, uh, a constant battle in uh, these countries where they have a lot of uh, rice as their main source of uh, filler. And uh, you go to other southern countries, southern, what I'm talking about, southern countries, being in the U.S., we say south of the border. So be Mexico or one of the Latin countries where they have a lot of uh, beans in their diet, for example. Uh, you won't see that here as much. Yeah, they'll have mongo beans here and uh, maybe some of garbanzo beans, but not as a staple of their diet like the rice is. So that's one of the issues that we have here when we're talking about living in the Philippines, what is accessible. And you'll find that the majority of the foods here are uh, very low in protein base. Uh, if you, if even if you get the quality of meats, the way they're produced, the way the chickens are raised, it's all for uh, mass production. Get them in, get them out. Uh, okay. Nothing has any protein in it. Uh, nothing is healthy for you. You'll find that people don't cook their foods as healthy as they should. With all the, uh, I, I don't know. I've been reading about the worms that stay in pork, for example. And uh, no matter at what heat level you cook it at, um, there's still going to be some kind of parasitical uh, live, live parasite in there that can possibly be in your intestines. So those are the things that people here are not educated on is basic nutrition. Uh, what do you eat on a daily basis? Uh, in, in the U.S., it's milk, eggs, cheese, uh, the yeah, Europe, it's yeah. the same, where you, you get people who they'll start off their, their breakfast with a cup of coffee or with a piece of bread and, and something uh, of a meat. And here it'll be just a rice with maybe a piece of fish or a, a bowl of uh, even soup. So, uh, wow. yeah, it's, it's here it's mostly food. It's mostly for filler, just to make your stomach feel like you, you're, you're full. But... If you look at the kids' sizes, the the difference between uh, the way they eat in Korea, more uh, more you know the, the way they cook, it's not all just uh, deep fried. In other words, and right. here basically that's what it is. It's it's a lot of deep fried foods, and then also with the bad you know the bad oils that they're frying it in, so it's compounded, and that's what um, I, I fight with that with my kids all the time. It's uh, the Jolly Bee uh, is even a bigger uh, seller than McDonald's would be. So, yeah. Yeah. again, uh, yeah, nutrition here. Uh, again, at our house, uh, we battle with uh, taking it one day at a time. We do our own little uh, gardening. We are into mm -hmm. the hydroponics where we grow uh, hydroponic lettuce. Uh, right now, uh, 
between me and a couple friends, we're growing a romaine lettuce, a uh, almeti lettuce, and then also we have some uh, some root type um, vegetables growing. We have a turmeric, a galangal, a ginger, and uh, we, you know you'll, we'll find little peppers growing around the house and. Uh, we will even put a pineapple in and see if it grows here. But, <laughs> but, but those are the those are the challenges that we have here because of the climate. Uh, so, as a person who's learning about um, mycology, which is the growing of mushrooms, uh, eventually okay. we hope to to change the mentality and the attitude of people here by introducing some other vegetables. Uh, to their diet um, it's a battle uh, a lot of people don't know the, the terminology that I'm throwing at them which is uh, commonplace in the US for example if I was to say uh, something to them about microgreens then it, it would be like a blind stare at me like you yeah, know yeah uh, no I never hey, heard those of that. micro those microgreens that I got from you let those were delicious when, they were when what I'm, when I'm at, they were delicious. I enjoyed them a lot. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and what it is, it's not me. It's just that they have different uh, um, nutritional value and um, they have flavor okay. to microgreens. And they, yeah. they, yeah, I'm growing for a purpose, in other words. Um, we, we get our seeds from the U.S., they're non GMO organic. And um, we're, we're growing to educate people about what they have as a potential that they could do in their own house, which is very easy. Uh, a lot of people can grow microgreens uh, in their uh, living room, uh, kitchen window, or any kind of a, a, a aerated, uh, sunlighted area. But the problem again here, um, getting people to even grow uh, wheatgrass or, or barley grass, uh, things that your system needs uh, just for the chlorophyll, uh, basic things like that. Again, switching over. I have kids. Uh, my own stepkids will tell me they don't like vegetables. Uh, here, uh -huh. try these. Try these microgreens. Oh, Dad, it's different, you know. And it's just an acquired. I, you know, what it is. It's funny because I'm I'm the opposite. I've lived here for over what 22 years. Yeah, and, that's what uh, I wanted people to know. How long have you been living here? Oh, your experience stands stands for something. Well, I, I've I've been a pescatarian, and yeah, I eat fish, and I eat uh, eggs, and I eat um, I, I consume uh, soy milk and um, some lactose products. I imagine when I'm baking and cooking, uh, but I do I don't eat any of the uh, pork fish. I mean, a uh, pork chicken or beef. I don't consume any of those, and I I haven't had any alcohol or or any of those for over 40 years, I can imagine. So it's been a while, but I, I try to stay consistent. I'm not the healthiest person. I, I do have back injury and other physical ailments. So for me, I, I'm trying to consume, consume myself into what I need. And especially at our age, uh, uh -huh. we, we find that our uh, digestive system is um, not as strong as it used to be, for example. True. So, um, yeah, staying away from more of the uh, the starchier foods that turn into the sugars, for example. You know, the rice is the breads. Right. Choose right. your breads. Choose your rice. Stay away from the whites. Go for the wheats or the brown rices, those kind of things that would be better for you. Those are the basics that I tell people what they could do here. If they can, if people can grow anything, uh, like I said, I see people now doing it on their balcony, just little uh, hydroponic systems that they got with 30, 40 holes, and that's enough to feed a family for, you know, a week or something. So uh, people could so do all kinds. The, so what's the cost of setting up a small hydroponic system? Uh, you can do anything from uh, a couple of hundred. When you're talking about PVC pipes is basically what you're doing with a little... Uh, uh, a little uh, aquarium pump, a couple of hoses, uh -huh. and uh, a bucket. So you can start, you know, real small. I recommend people really go on YouTube 
and start looking at some of these. I, I, I think I, I should give you a few links that you can post in the, the future for your uh, viewers. Um, I, I follow a couple of uh, herbalists, um, uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Delves or Dr. Sebi. Or, there's a few other ones that um, people also like to look at some herbalists. People here don't know that um, right in their backyard, and a lot of people do know it because they consume it for their illnesses is uh, malongai, moonga. And that's one of those plants that grows very easily here. Uh, people consume it only really for their soups, may, mainly, when they're sick I've for their digestion system. You can look it up yeah. and see the benefits. It's got 80% of what your body's looking for on a daily. And uh, we're, we're actually doing it um, to make our, we make our own teas with it. So okay. just, uh, we made our little own little um, uh, aerators and uh -huh. our aeration trays and, and just uh, hydrating it. And then it's uh, something we just put in a coffee grinder and, and bag it up, make our own teas and add a little bit of lemon honey. Since we have our ginger, our turmeric, we make teas out of it. And we uh -huh. substitute that for, uh, you know, I don't, I don't drink sodas, for example. I don't think I've had a soda in 10 years or more. I don't either. So, yeah, those, you know, but definitely drink a lot of turmeric and ginger. A lot of uh, people don't know that if you drink turmeric, you got to add a little pepper to make the pepperine and the, 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 the turmeric activate itself. So those are the things that uh, I'd like to share with people, not only growing, but how to take it. Um, we, we take some capsules, and if anybody on your channel is interested in it in Lapu-Lapu, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, share some ideas with them, some websites and some YouTube channels. Uh, growing mushrooms can be done here very easily. They have a variety called oyster mushroom, and uh, it's, it's for the uh, environment. It's conducive to this environment. Uh, we're trying to grow an indoor environment, which is a little bit more complicated, called lion's mane. Uh, lion's mane, cordyceps, uh, these are, they have more technical names, of course. Uh, but if you look it up, the, 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 the names are, um, what, what they are, they're different ways of eating what I call a steak. It's, it's a mushroom steak. So really? how do you say it's a steak? Well, a, a, the term steak is actually not the term meat. It's just a definition of a certain size of a piece of meat is called a steak. Right. So right. it could be a steak of salmon. It could be a steak of fish. It'd be a steak. So to have a steak of mushroom, for example, well, the way the size and the shape and, and the texture of a lion's mane, for example, would mimic uh, a, a steak after you cook it and know how to prepare it properly. So the uh, ways that we're trying to grow them here in Lapu Lapu is in an indoor environment. Okay. So it could be quite expensive when in the air conditioning. Um, yeah, we have to set up a little mini lab. We have to import our spores. Mushrooms don't have seeds, they have spores. Uh, a lot yeah. of it's a different process than growing uh, leafy greens, for example, where everything so, uh, is seeds. So, yeah. You, you, can, you can become quite detailed about this, and I love that about you. Give me three things that an expat must not do that you have seen now. You've been here 20 years. What are the three top things that you've seen that have hurt expats? Okay, like, as, like, like as my philosopher father would say, I'm not in a position to tell anybody what to do. <laughs> so as I can recommend to other people, and as I suggest to other people, uh, would be the first one would be to definitely limit the consumption of uh, what I say basic Filipino food. Wow, that's uh, you know I mean I I consume rice. Um, I try to make it brown rice or red rice, but I do uh -huh. consume rice. Um, I switch rice more times over to garbanzo beans. That's uh, my to go as an alternative. If I'm making an, uh, uh, I go to mashed potatoes, for example. 
-huh. instead of uh, fried fried any you know fried potatoes or French fries. Blood. You um, mentioned the word pescatarian. Pescatarian. Pesc pescatarian is is just people who eat fish. Okay. Lactarian is people who eat dairy. Ah, okay. Lacto. Right. Okay. So, but the the, so we, the other thing would be, um, you know, the meat when you go to uh, the markets, the wet markets, the local markets, the stores, even the imports. Uh, you're looking at what you're consuming there. Um, and of course, the you know, other than the meats, I, you know, it's the sodas, right? Yeah, so, I don't touch those. Yeah, I mean, you can go, the, the list doesn't stop there. Um, the list is long, but yeah, if you were talking about the top three uh, that come to mind right away, then yeah, you can change those very easily. Uh, here, here, what I'm finding out in my studies is we, we used to drink hibiscus in California and their flowers called gumamilla is actually a Jamaican hibiscus. But oh. I didn't know that until you do that translation and it grows freely here. And all people have to do again is hydrate it. They can make it into a, um, a powder form. And you could, again, you can make it into a beautiful, like, you know, summer drink, for example, add a little lemon, a little oh. honey to it what people like stay away from that sugar you know but right again and then and you know what it is here also i and i can't fault everybody uh because i know it's a cost um definitely economically related for, right. for anything that you can consume that's healthy it's going to cost you more so i i don't know if i should have prefaced that by saying that people consume the foods that they eat because it's affordable that's that's an issue. Um, of course, in in Western worlds, I don't know what the numbers are, but if you look them up, I'm pretty sure the 25 to 20 something percent of your your income is going to go to food. To where here, it'll be on the upper 70s to 80 percent of your income is going to go to food. You know. Really? That much? Well, it can be if you're only making. Uh, you know, you got a family and your income is 500, 600 pesos a day. You know, and Okay, okay, Lud. Let's let's use you as an example. How many children do you have? Me? Well, we have a large family because we're a blended family, but we're we're also living in two households because of our family sit situation. Our our dynamics is very rare compared to other people. Um, but we we but have seven kids. High end. No, but we have seven yeah. kids. Yeah, that we take care of in our our immediate okay. family, and then we have extended family because in our uh family is that big to where we do we do you know have other sister-in-laws and cousins nieces and stuff that also uh do live in our house so so what is your monthly food bill it, it's not even something that uh that i would even look at um i would oh, try scary. to is that scary huh? <laughs> no no it's in the area of where uh it's on a need basis but like you know some people like i said my filipino side of the family they still consume uh one sack of rice within a month and a 50 kilo sack so they are big consumers of rice out in the island um you know here it's different you know we're in the city and we have a, a different uh, uh way of eating and the budget's a lot more expensive here in the city Right. So, um, but again, we, we try to offset it when I go up to the mountains, for example, we get some great vegetables up there in uh, Busai. We get some really good prices up there and I recommend people go in there instead of, uh, we, we go up there maybe once every 10 days and stock up those kind of things. Um, we get our, uh, meats. Uh, there's a great place called Possel in South, uh, Cebu, which uh, people can go and get some of the, the fresher fish, you know. And, That's uh, what I wanted you to end this with. What would be your recommendations for where to get the good vegetables, good meat? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the people I tell them that, you know, um, matter of fact, we've gotten some contacts up there. It was funny how we get corn up on the um, the major highway here, the, the inner, inner 
Coastal Highway. 815 going up the mountain past Marco Polo there. And uh, we know a lady that we, we get our, our red corn from. So a lot of people don't eat the uh, red corn, but we also eat the yellow corn. Uh, but they, it's all fresh corn that they have up there. So we we're happy to go up there. And, and I don't know if I can send you some pictures, but just to get red corn here. And I've never heard of it. No? Well, uh -huh. uh, you know, all, all yellow would be uh, modified vegetables, right? So bananas are modified. Um, if you look up your um, heirloom vegetables, you would see what vegetables really looked like during the native periods of how when people were hunter-gatherers, when they were eating back right. then and growing, you know, food and uh, food didn't look the same because it wasn't modified for uh you know, corn corn in the U.S., for example, is not modified for consumption of human beings is for 80 percent of corn grown in, in the U.S., for example, would be for the consumption of cattle or for yeah, feed for yeah. agriculture, for, uh, yeah, live, live feed. So okay. it's what, what you're consuming. And again, here, the reason why we're trying to introduce uh, hydroponics, we're trying to introduce uh, the microgreens, the mushrooms, uh, there's another company called uh, Microsphere. I know that's out of Manila. They're doing very well. But again, a lot of local people here in the, the area doing uh, oyster mushrooms. That's pretty accessible. Um, I've seen changes in the last 20 years where people are seeing now vegan restaurants. And uh, I've been to, to a few of them. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll uh, start to introduce another uh, it, you know, Indonesian favorite of mine, which is called tempeh. Uh, we just started doing it today. As a matter of fact, uh, T E M P E H. Look it up. Uh -huh. It's a again, it's a uh, soybean product, just like tofu, okay. and and that's again very accessible because of the Koreans now and the Japanese and a lot of the expats. We do have some stores where where I recommend people go into to get the tofu now. Um, a lot of good ways to make a Szechuan, oyster Szechuan tofu, for example. Okay. Um, so, Lud, so Lud, yeah. do you post any of this on your Instagram account? I don't because uh, I'm not technical. I'm not savvy um, with that. I wish I could. And I, I wish I had a person who could document some of the things we do because, like I said, it's worth it for just sharing one or two uh, tidbits because I, I, I look on YouTube constantly. I'm on it like uh, I wouldn't say religiously, but uh, enough to where if I'm delving into a subject that I need to know about, I'll research mm -hmm. it just about as thoroughly as I can. And uh, that's why I'm at the point. Like I said, this, these are simple projects, but I run against the simplest issues of why I see why it's not here. Like I said, the microgreens. Because of the cost, the costs are just astronomical. So okay. right away, just as an introduction, I reduced at least 50% of my cost on the microgreens from what the price would be in the U.S. Okay. So I can't say so, that about gas. <laughs> yeah. Gas yeah. costs about the same as it costs here as it costs in, in the U.S. So I'm, yeah. I'm trying to introduce my microgreens at a uh, – it's not about the money. It's about let me introduce it to people who, who understand that they need it in their diet, they appreciate it, and they're looking for something that um, they can share with Thank their friends you. and so on and so on. And, and let's Thank see how, how this takes off. And the mushrooms is coming. Again, we have lettuce. Every week we do, um, I don't know, anywhere from uh, right now, 20 kilos a week of lettuce, maybe. So when am I getting my next delivery? Uh, every Thursday we do the lettuce. And okay. then um, probably on Saturday we have the microgreens. Uh, again, we have a colorful microgreen called the amaranth microgreen. It's probably the first ever grown <laughs> in Lapu Lapu. Okay. And, and that's just the, so you know, so I'm happy to introduce something like that. And, and if you try it, you're going to have to give me a review. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So, yeah. All right. We're going to end this here. Okay. We're at 24 minutes.
I appreciate everything that you shared, and I look forward to it. Stay on the line while this thing finishes up. I want to thank everybody. Thank Lud in the comments. You got any questions for him? I'll pass them on and get back to you. I, I, just, video. Want to, I just want people to look, don't leave a comment about Lud being long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it. I, but you, I want to thank you. When you got to live and breathe it and uh, passionate about something, then I yeah. think that, that people should be able to talk about it. True. I gave you, I gave you so, 25 minutes. Thank you very much. So, thank you. All right.